Today we will be painting a lantern. Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Today I will be using some watercolor paper, a Sharpie, masking tape, a ruler, watercolor paint, and a little bit of salt. This is just regular table salt, but you can use other varieties of salt as well. The first thing I do usually when I paint with watercolor is I like to tape my paper down to a board. And not only does this give the paper a really nice crisp white outline, but it also helps keep it from rippling or wrinkling as I am adding water. And for this particular project, I will be adding quite a bit of water to my paper. So this will help the paper lay flat and not start to buckle with all of the extra water added to it. I'm just using regular masking tape, but painter's tape would work as well. I'm taping down all four sides and now I am ready to draw. Now I have looked up some different pictures of lanterns and I chose to do something that I liked. Um, you could also do a pencil with this. I'm gonna go ahead and just use Sharpie right away so you can see my lines better. And it's very important to use a ruler so that you have nice straight lines. And for me, the easiest thing to start off with is a rectangle that is pretty much centered in the page. So I wanna leave a little bit of space on either side of my rectangle. And you can look at a variety of lanterns on Google just by Googling lantern outlines. And there's so many different kinds and shapes. So pick one that you like. Um, they have ones that are on posts and they have ones that hang from like a chain. So decide kind of which one you wanna go with and go ahead and get drawing. Now I've started with a very basic rectangle. I've decided to make mine hanging from a chain instead of on a post. So I have to kind of keep that in mind as I'm adding other elements to my picture. I decided to add a line parallel to the bottom of my lantern. That's a little bit wider and then a line parallel to the top of my lantern that's a little bit wider. And I'm just going to add a curved line to connect it to my lantern. Next, I decided I wanted to divide, to divide the inside of my lantern into thirds so I'm trying to kind of eyeball three sections here. If you want to, you can actually measure to make sure that they are equal. I just wanted to go ahead and do that. I also decided to make a floating shape on the inside of each of my sections. So I'm adding a set of parallel lines inside each of my sections of my lantern. I'm trying to make the lines about the same length. And then I'm just gonna add kind of these points to the tops and bottoms of these parallel lines, just to give it kind of a nice little elegant detail. Next, I'm going to add a little bit more to the top and the bottom of my lantern. I'm gonna start with a dot on the bottom in the center, and I'm just gonna add a curve lines that connect to my center dot at each little section of my lantern. I'm gonna do that to the top as well. So I'm gonna start in the middle, make a dot. I am really trying to pay attention to saving a little bit of space for my little hook at the top of my lantern. So I don't wanna to get too close to that edge of that tape. 
I'm going to add a couple of shapes kind of hanging down off the bottom of the lantern. You could add spirals or swirls or really whatever types of shapes you want. And then this is the hanger on the top of the lantern. And then I'm going to have a cord kind of connecting it off of my page. So I'm not doing anything too crazy too detailed but I really like the amount of detail that's here and I think I'm going to go with that. Um, if there is a section of your lantern that you want to be dark this would be the time to add that in. So I decided that instead of doing the entire top and bottom of my lantern dark I was just going to do these little edges here and then leave the top and bottom light um, so that you can see the detail of those divided sections. Um, so I am just going to color these in with Sharpie. And the reason I'm using Sharpie for this project is that it is waterproof. It's a permanent marker. That way when I add water or watercolor on top, the marker will not move. It will not be bothered by that. If you use a washable marker for this, you will run into all sorts of problems. Unfortunately, one of my students did this and had to restart because once they added the water, it just became a smeared mess of black marker. So make sure you've got a nice permanent marker. All right, time to get to the painting part. So I'm trying to use a larger flat brush and I'm dipping it just in plain water and I really just want to cover my picture with clean water. I'm going to get the entire paper wet. So I am making sure to just fill the page with water. It does not matter what direction you paint, just try to make sure that every area of your paper is filled with clean water and you can do this with a brush or if you happen to have like a little spray bottle I've got like this little one right here you can always just do that too just to make sure the whole area gets covered with water either way all right, now that it is completely saturated with water, I'm going to dive into a lot of yellow. Now you can use just regular watercolor for this or liquid watercolors look, work really well for this too. So I'm using a regular watercolor for mine, um, but my students actually used yellow and blue liquid watercolors and they gave some really nice bright colors. So you're going to add the yellow in kind of a circular motion and starting in the middle of your lantern and then kind of going a little bit outside of the lines to kind of show that glow. And then I'm going to switch to my blue. I'm really trying to dig a lot of paint out so that it's a nice dark rich color. And I'm going to kind of start with the corners and make sure those are filled in with blue and then kind of work my way around the yellow glow. And because the paper's already wet, the colors will intermingle. And that's okay, we just want the majority of the blue to be on the outside and the majority of the yellow to be on the inside. If I got a little bit too much water puddling in one spot, you can just kind of drink it up with a napkin or a Kleenex. So I had quite a bit of water puddling right in the center of my page. So I just wanted to drink a little bit of that extra up with my Kleenex or my paper towel, whatever you have around. All right, now I'm adding some salt. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on my hand and then use my other hand to pinch the salt and then just sprinkle it around my picture. And the salt, um, just like when you add salt to an icy sidewalk, it, it kind of sucks in that moisture and that extra um, 
water and it creates kind of this cool effect. So um, it's a really fun tool to use with watercolor. Every time I use salt, the effect is a little bit different. So yeah. Anyway, I have let that all dry and now I am removing my tape by pulling it away from my painting and I will be calling that a masterpiece. And there you have it. So I will show you what my students' projects look like as well so you can kind of see how different the salt reacted on different kinds of paper. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this project. It was just a beautiful result and they look so nice hanging up together in the hallway. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe below to see more videos um, of different fun art projects that you can try. Have a fabulous day. Bye.